One team that always used to beat up on them was the Miami Dolphins. But Buffalo had beaten four in a row, and they went down to Miami, expected to win the game at Joe Robbie Stadium. Only temperatures, well, they were way, way up high, near the 100-degree mark. But Dan Marino ready against Cornelius Bennett and company. Hits Troy Stratford early with a pass. And then out of the shotgun, look at the Dolphins' new pants, folks. Avoids the rush of Cornelius. See, Marino is faster in the new pants. Completes it to Crash Jensen. Marino delaying the calls. Buffalo offside, but completes on the free play to Andre Brown. Next play, Marino to Mark Duper, who guaranteed a victory in this game. Beats Nate Odoms. Sets up a run by Stratford. 7-3 Miami. An upset in the making. The other side of the ball, the Bills line open in some holes for Thurman Thomas. But again, it was Thurman Thomas left, right, and some other things. Not a lot else. Throwing the ball, Kelly with a lot of time here. And William Judson figures, I just better take a pass interference penalty. That sets up the Bills only scoring in the half. It's 7-3. to three. Uh, Jim Kelly has all the time in the world. Andre Reid, wide open, drops the ball at the 10-yard line. You think the Dolphin defense was fired up? Yeah, they made the hit right there. Number one draft pick, Lewis Oliver. At least the one that they've signed thus far. 10-3 Miami at the half. Second half, Bill's big play defense. Troy Stratford cups off, uh, coughs up the ball. Shane Conlon caused it. Cornelius Bennett recovered it. Two plays later, the Bill scored 10-10. But Jensen blocks the punt by John Kidd. Mark Logan recovers the Dolphins' lead 17-10. Kelly finally gets it going. Finds Flip Johnson in the end zone. 24 to 20, Miami. Defense on third and eight. Nate Odoms with the big interception returns into the 49 yard line. The Bills trying to mount a last gasp drive with two seconds to go. Jim Kelly, who in 44 NFL games had never scored a rushing touchdown, scores on the last play of the game. They come back about three minutes later and kick the extra point. Buffalo wins by three, 27 to 24 over Miami. And Buffalo from the 41-yard line. This drive commenced at the 9. And not looking was for a cat and nothing is picked off by Braxton, who ran one all the way back last week for a score against Kansas City. He's tackled by Kennebrew. And for a cat, the intended receiver never even turned around. And Jim Kelly headed right for Burkett and thought twice about it and showed some maturity and pulled up and headed for the sidelines. Did not hear the audible, whether it was a change or whether Kelly had planned on Burkett pulling up at about the five yard line. Now he's up there trying oh, to talk to upset. Burkett. Well, Burkett won't talk to him. He's saying, Come on, let's work this out. We got a lot of football left to play. And Mueller are the backs, and this is almost hurt himself on the spike. Locker room. Yeah, but it's now my 11 against your 11. That was Burkett's first catch of the night on first and 10 from the 20. Kelly going for Harmon in the end zone. Touchdown. He has to be venting a little frustration. Wyman Henderson's way. First down from the 42-yard line. Kelly. And it's dropped at the five by Harmon. Oh, did Braxton touch that? Boy, Braxton was awful close. He's acting like he did. It was very Boy, close. Boy, it's close. I mean, a desperation dive by Braxton, but I think he came a little short of the ball. I think that's a drop by Andre Reed. Okay, let's... Let's, I mean, Ronnie Harmon, let's, we'll take a look at it after this play. Back sure. live here, and that pass yeah. is incomplete, intended for Davis. It's let's go there. back and look at it again. Here's Braxton going to dive for it, and he came short. No, Ronnie Harmon had that ball right in his hands. Ooh, and Braxton's already on the ground. That's, that's a touchdown Buffalo if he holds on to it. It wasn't last week against Miami. It was Andre Reed who dropped oh. a sure touchdown pass from Kelly. 14, Al Michaels. Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorf saying good night from Rick Stadium in Orchard Park, New York.
nine straight games. Last year, preseason, early this season, away from the House of Pain. But by the way, the Oilers have opened up. The Astrodome didn't matter. It was the House of Strain. Into town came another team stumbling a little bit, the Buffalo Bills. But this is what the fans thought they'd do to Jim Kelly, the Oilers. But early on, Kelly goes for Andre Reid, hits him in the helmet. Embarrassed. Meanwhile, the Bills secondary, embarrassed. Warren Moon to Drew Hill on the crossing pattern. Burning Leonard Smith, motors 48 yards before he's pushed out on the one-yard line, sets up a Moon touchdown. The Oilers lead it 7-3. But Leonard comes back with an interception, and Kelly to Thurman Thomas. How important is he to Buffalo's offense? 10-7 Bills after one. This one had the feel of a wham-banger. Tony Zendejas, good day for the Zendejas. There's a uh, field goal, cuts the Bills lead to 13-10, but not good here. It's blocked. And by Daryl Talley, and picked up by number 38, Mark Kelso. Kelso to the half pole, Kelso to the 50, Kelso to the 40, Kelso to the eight pole, Kelso with a throw on to go, Kelso with the last play of the half, touchdown. And the Bills lead it 20 to 10, rather than being tied at 13 all. You look at it again, special teams create the Oilers last year, Tom. Chris, big breakdown on special teams. John Grimsley lets Daryl Talley inside and touch. You never do that on special teams. Remember that play because missed opportunities like Bubba McDowell's blown interception or Leon Seals hit on Warren Moon. The ball is right in front of him. It was a game of missed opportunities. The opportunities were there, but often the team didn't cash in. Kinnebrew fumbles. Oilers are everywhere. Who recovers? Jim Kelly getting battered again, but he's on the ball. No missed opportunity here in the third quarter. Kelly to the rookie speedster, Don Beebe, and he is going to flat out run into the end zone. Let get him go, 63 yards, 27 to 10. The Bills in a laugher in the house of pain. But Highsmith scores a touchdown to make it 27 to 17. And did someone say special teams? John Kidd blocked by Chris Dishman. He waltzes in for the touchdown. And it's 27 to 24, Bills. What is going on? The Bills should have put it away. This time it's Ray Bentley. He lets Bubba McDowell in. And once you get the kick blocked, Dishman makes the good pickup into the end zone. We go on to the fourth quarter of a game getting wilder by the minute. Kelly to Andre Reed, who says goodbye to Steve Brown. He could go all the way, 78 yards. Once again, Andre Reed, 100-yard day, receiving at a big day on Monday night at a loss, and the Bills are up by 10, 34-24 in the house of pain. But Moon to Ernest Gibbons, watch him make the turn, has one man to beat. It's Kelso, and he flips into the end zone for a touchdown, 34-31 Buffalo. Do not try this at home, right, Tom? Unless you're a Louisville product like Ernie oh, Gibbons yes. is. Now, here he gets to the goal line. He tries to leap, but he gets the leg nicked. Came down almost on his feet, but eh, that's got to sting a little bit. Except for the Russian judge. He got a perfect mark everywhere else. So, Buffalo, Kelly looking for Andre Reed. It's picked off by Steve Brown on his band of renown. He's down to the seven-yard line. Lorenzo White with the touchdown. And the Oilers lead it 38-34 in the fourth. You see the time remaining in the game. Kelly, heavy pressure, looks for that man, number 34, Thurman Thomas. He's all alone. He's in the end zone. The Bills lead it 41-38. Jerry Glanville says not in the house of pain. Oilers on the ropes. Moon, Hayward Jeffries, hit by Nate Odoms. It looks like the game is over when Darryl Talley scores. But hold everything. The rule is receiver must have possession. Eh. I thought it was a horrible call because Thank not you. only did he have possession, but he started to make a move upfield and was hit. But the Oilers got to keep the ball, and with eight seconds to go, a Finte field goal of 52 yards. Ties it at 41. We're going to OT after the questionable call. Zendejas can end everything from 43 yards, but no. Offsides. Zendejas will have another shot of 38 yards. The kick is, no, off to the left. Well, you can't expect it for nine quarters, Axe, and Dejas missed it. So Kelly is the last laugh to Andre Reed. He gets loose, and he could go all the way for the touchdown. Jerry Glanville sees the Oilers lose in the House of Pain, 47 to 41. Jim Kelly, and there's in Dejas, Jim Kelly, a career and team high five touchdown passes. Any blame on Jim Kelly? I have the feeling, we said it early, Kelly could have a boomer year this year, and he said the offense had to pick up, 
so far he's delivered. If he gets back to the USFL type of way that he used to play back then, the Bills are going to go a long way. But the quarterback problem in this game wasn't with the Buffalo Bills. It was with New England. They decided to make a change. Tony Eason had taken so much abuse that Raymond Berry said, I have to go with the little one, Doug Flutie, and he decided to do it on the road for the first time. Looking for better times with his starting quarterback, Doug Flutie, 8 and 3 as a starter. But a rocky beginning for Flutie. Looking for Hartley Dykes just zips it over his head. Now Flutie looking for the sidelines this time, and he will get the sidelines, but that's all again. No receiver over there looking for Cedric Jones. Tom, he's struggling. We talked about his problems in the pocket. He has to throw that ball over some linemen who are some of them standing a foot taller than him. Here again, he needs a lane to throw the ball. He can't find it. Gets another pass knocked down. Flutie uh, does come up and knock the ball towards the earth, though, to save an interception. If it wasn't enough, from the shotgun, he's scrambling. Receivers are covered, and he cannot outrun Bruce Smith, who grabs him from behind and takes him down. Jim Kelly, though, not with the same trouble. Out of the pack, looks like he's going to be sacked, rolls out to his right, and then lofts this one off of one foot. Andre Reed is there to make the big catch. Kelly finds Andre Reed one other time. Andre Reed with a big day, 114 yards, and for the third consecutive game, he would go over 100 yards. That is a Buffalo Bills record. Jim Kelly and Reed's receiving led to plenty of touchdowns as well. Thurman Thomas takes the grab here. Remember, Larry Kinnebrew, who would normally punch it over from that close, was suspended, but Thurman takes it in for the touchdown. Second quarter, it's 14-3 for the Bills. And Jim Kelly wants to find his tight end, Pete Metzlars. Metzlars is there to make the grab. Kelly in the pocket, zips it in there. Touchdown, 21-3. It was 24-3 at halftime. Second half, Doug Flutie. Trying to change things. An 80-yard drive here. He rolls to his right. He's being hounded. Still finds Cedric Jones for the game. Third quarter. Patriots is still driving 24-3. Flutie to Cedric Jones one more time. This time for the touchdown. But Doug Flutie simply had a horrendous day. They will come back to Foxborough. They'll probably give him another shot at starting in front of the hometown fans. Jim Kelly wasn't through either. Fourth quarter to Thurman Thomas. And where was the defense? He just takes off by himself. 73 yards for the touchdown to make it 31 to 10. Jim Kelly was not intercepted and tossed three touchdown passes on the day. Doug Flutie trying to answer back in the fourth quarter. Rolls to his right, up into the pocket. Dumps this one off. I mean, this one was thrown out of bounds. To add insult to injury, wouldn't have counted anyway because it was an illegal forward pass. Buffalo now three and one. The Patriots have scored just 23 points in three weeks since they lost. Where the Buffalo Bills were in Indianapolis today. If the Bills could beat the Colts, they didn't do it there last year. But if they could win today, they'd own a two-game lead over the entire division. But if not, it would be a logjam. Jim Kelly, who had thrown 10 touchdown passes in the four games going in, saw plenty of blue today. Freddie Young forces the fumble. Donnell Thompson recovers it. The result, a Colts touchdown. And you get the feeling this was not the way the Bills offense had played for the first four games. Donnell Thompson really lays down a hit. Four sacks of Buffalo quarterbacks today. Kelly then distracted, can't handle the next snap. Sam Clancy buries him by the time he gets the football. And he just saw more and more Colts, Tommy. Quintus McDonald here taking a free shot, even though he gets the pass off. Kelly's falls on that left shoulder. It's already taking some punishment. Punishment was a catch word for him. They continued to swarm him all day here. The inter interception by Dwayne Bickett. Driving Kelly crazy all day. Turnovers ruined the Bills and Marv Levy on this day. Colts continue to pound on Jim Kelly. Once again, the crumbling pocket, and the Colts have that gambling defense, which certainly worked to perfection. An ill-advised pass that Keith Taylor picks off. Third turnover of the half, 20 to nothing Colts at halftime. Would things get better in the second half? Well, this is Buffalo's first pass of the third quarter. And Jim looked at the yellow pages and found a plumber. The problem was he plays for the Colts, Bruce Plumber. And Plummer could go all the way, but he's going to fall down at the 11-yard line rule. He's down by contact, a field goal. It's 23 to nothing, Colts. Finally, the Bills, who have just handed the Colts all these points, showed some life. But when they get a touchdown, they pay for it. Kelly to read 16 yards, but Kelly took a shot, and Tommy watched him land. Well, mass time velocity equals force. John Han Han has the mass, 300 pounds, puts the hit on Kelly. 
from the right side, and both he and Kelly fall on Kelly's left shoulder. And this just in E equals MC squared. Kelly had to leave out for about four weeks with a separated shoulder. More on that in a moment. So the Colts would take it easy, right? Well, Dickerson didn't start, didn't quite get 100 yards, but he got 92 yards and two touchdowns, 30 to seven Colts. Kelly's replacement, Frank Wright. And now he's thrown at the sedate land on that one. It's picked off by Keith Taylor, his second interception of the day, and he rubbles, bubbles, doubles. Yeah, he's the offensive lineman's really going to catch him. 80-yard touchdown, 37 to 14. The Colts romp, six Bills turnovers converted to 23 Colts points. And it's the Colts tying the Bills for first in the division. An option. They're going to take a couple more whacks at it. Somebody better go with the receiver out there. And a quick shift at the line of scrimmage. They set the one count, and they caught the Rams' defense totally off guard. By the 10-yard line because it was Newsom that fell down. First oh. down, goal to go. 20 seconds on the clock. They need a touchdown. A field goal won't do it. Right. He was there in the end zone. That's touchdown. So very little. Frank Wright. And I'm sure this pleases a lot of people in the Bay Area. The tale of two totally different teams that play in the Meadowlands. And the best team in New York, really the only one that plays in New York, the Buffalo Bills. The Bills took on the Jets today at Rich Stadium, and, and maybe they're going to recall it Wright Stadium because Frank Reich has been doing a very nice job indeed, subbing for Jim Kelly at quarterback. Here's Jim on the sidelines. And uh, was this a normal game? Well, no. The Jets on a punt return. The defense had held the Bills, or at least they fought. 12 men on the receiving team. Five yard penalties on the previous spot. So that means the Bills get the ball back and they would try a field goal. But Scott Mesro's offside, so they get a chance to go for the touchdown. Thurman Thomas left. 10-0 Buffalo. Kenny O'Brien back at the starting role for the New York Jets. Had no, uh, no uh, help from Johnny Hector. Had little help from JoJo Townsell. Get back, JoJo. And old Bill Chris Burkett could have thrilled the fans with it. No, he didn't catch it. And Freeman, no. And Ken O'Brien... <laughs> Finally hits Freeman McNeil, but then guess what? Fabes! Leonard Smith is going to pick up the ball, and he rumbles day. The Blizzard defense held the Jets to only three first downs in the first half. And Reggie McElroy couldn't even catch that pass. So that's what the Jets' offense looked like. And then there was the matter of Bruce Smith. And Bruce Smith has discovered a new way to get to the quarterback. Instead of coming up front, always get behind the guy. Bruce Smith with the sack from behind. Bruce Smith coming around the corner with the sack from behind. And then when you're worried about Bruce, we get him one more time. Bruce I'm Smith sorry. with the sack. No, he runs into his own line, but Jeff Criswell. Yeah. Criswell with the sack. Ken O'Brien, 11 of 29, 150, 140 yards. Well, whatever it is. But Bruce Smith had three of five Buffalo sacks today, 52 in his career. But what about Frank Wright, the hero of last Monday night against the Rams? And Andre Reed, 20 yards out, made it a 20 to nothing Buffalo lead. Yeah, Jim Kelly is saying, whoa, this is not too bad. Buffalo goes on to humble the Jets 34-3, holding them to only 154 yards. Meanwhile, out on the left. And welcome back to NFL Prime Time. Prime Time. John Saunders joins us now. And, John, week one of the season... Uh, Miami almost upset the Bills. Kelly running in on the very last play of the game. This time, Buffalo had them in their place, and their defense was zeroing in on Marino, weren't they? Yeah, they were, and a long time before any defense had done that. But think about it. Had the Buffalo Bills lost that first game of the season to Miami, the Dolphins would be tied for first place. The Bills today were looking for the series sweep for the third straight year and their fifth straight win. Jim Kelly still not strong enough to play, but Bruce Smith and the Buffalo defense was ready. Smith waits for Sammy Smith and drills him to the turf. 
Smith, a dominant force as usual. The Bills pressure Dan Marino constantly, and Marino isn't used to that. Under the heat, he fires. It's picked off by Cornelius Bennett. The Bills in business with good field position. And Thurman Thomas out of Oklahoma State, the right side, takes it to the sideline. And then watch the cutback. Goes 30 yards, takes it in for the touchdown. Not too many people do it better than that, Tom. Thurman Thomas is probably as good a back as you'll see in this league. He has excellent moves, a burst that gets him through the line of scrimmage. And once he gets to the sideline, what you like is the coaches cut back and really turn it on right there. Just within the fourth year. Yeah, that's picking up speed in a hurry. The Bills are really hungry for the sack of Marino. 19 games since he's been sacked, but Jeff Wright gets in there, gets him at the one. First time in 759 passing attempts that Dan Marino was beaten. And he was beaten badly on this one. Well, Jeff Ulanek gets the center turn, gets his shoulders by. Marino just can't avoid it. Marino goes down twice in the game, but Frank Wright didn't throw the ball too often. But when Wright did throw the ball, he made it count. Finds Don Beebe, 63 yards for the touchdown. Only nine tosses on the day for Wright, but he had Buffalo on top, 21 to three, as he hit six of them. Marino gets Miami going in the third quarter. Mark Clayton makes nice moves there between two defenders takes off with everyone chasing him, picks up a block into the end zone for the touchdown. It's now a 21 to 10 game. But that man Thurman Thomas was at it again. You, you can't say too much about Thurman. Once he catches the story, I've always got the great vision, makes a nice little hurdle there, always refusing to run out of bounds, gets every yard that he can get. Career high 148 yards and Don Shula would have a big decision. Fourth and inches at the Bills 47. Give it to Sammy Smith. Smith is just stopped cold by Bruce Smith, and the Bills were fired up. This is one of my favorite linebackers in the league. This is Cornelius. Started outside, came inside, and there he is getting another piece of Marino. And there's Bruce Smith getting a piece of Marino. Dan Marino not used to that, and when you're pressured, this will happen. The pass is tipped. It's picked off by Kirby Jackson, his second of the game. Some shifty moves. He goes 40 yards and takes it down the sidelines into the end zone for the touchdown 31 to 10 the bills on top dan marino if you read lips you know dan marino's not a happy guy as the bills win it dan marino's 19 straight without being sacked that was an nfl record the bills are now six and two they had 280 yards rushing oh the quarterback can change not a surprise but frank reich had gone three and oh since taking over for jim kelly Kelly was at 3-2, and two, but they decide to come back with Jim Kelly as his shoulder was healthy. He missed three weeks in the first quarter. Kelly hits James Lofton for 10 yards, his 600th career reception, and he was not done. He hit Lofton one more time. This one, seven yards for a touchdown, seven zip bills. Chris Miller goes down the sidelines to Deion Sanders, who was playing on offense. And Tom, boy, did he get a lesson. Well, Deion Sanders finding out what, it, what it's like to be a receiver and have the safety come over in time. Paybacks, I think is what they call him. Miller again to Deion, right through his hands. And Marion Campbell says, I got to teach him a few things. Number 21, looking on, learning the offense. Kelly's pass goes through Flip Johnson's hands into the hands of Albert Shelley. And he takes off, taking it inside the Bills' 10-yard line on third and goal. Keith Jones will go over the top. Watch him twist and slide into the end zone. Falcons lead 10-7. Bills' next possession. Jim Kelly goes across the middle to Andre Reed. This one covers 28 yards, setting up the Bills. Later, play action. Kelly to Keith McKellar, 11 yards. Buffalo is back on top, but the Falcons come right back. Miller goes down the sidelines. Ricky Dixon is wide open as he beats Kirby Jackson, 17-14 Falcons. But Miller paid the price. Well, Bruce Smith, I think an unintentional hit. He's just so big, they're about head level when he bends over. Yeah, it's tough to get out of that big guy's way. 20-14, here come the Bills. Thurman Thomas cuts in, goes in from the three, 21 to 20 for Buffalo. In the fourth quarter, key play, third and 15 for the Falcons. Watch Miller scramble. George Thomas, Nate Odom's on his back, bumps him, grabs him, that is pass interference, and the drive stays alive. Miller then hits Jones, leaps over Kirby Jackson right there, and gets the first down. A little bit of a high jumping ability here. Well, it's great athletic talent, and what it teaches a defender is never keep your head down. Always keep your eyes up where you can see the ball carrier coming at you. Later, Jones goes airborne from the five, he's in. 
And Marion Campbell thinks he has a victory. But on the ensuing kickoff, Don Beebe, who's been timed at 4 2 8 and a 40, could go all the way. But Dion Sanders prime, is trying prime, to catch him. Prime, prime, and prime time prime, does prime. haul him down from behind. Larry Kinnebrew would score from the one yard out, 28 27 Buffalo. Chris Miller, though, was not done. Miller scrambling again. Hits Stacy Bailey, 20, 41 yards, rather. And Marv Levy now is the one who has to worry a little bit. It's McFadden, who had earlier hit from 54 yards, the longest of his career. And a chippy at 50 yards here. And knocks it through as the Falcons win 30 to 28. It ends a two-game losing streak. The Bills' three-game winning streak. McFadden's longest field goal of his career was also the longest at Fulton County Stadium. In the AFC... On to the AFC East, uh, where John Saunders, the Buffalo Bills, uh, pretty much have things in their own hands, especially with their defense and Shane Conlon coming back healthy. They thinking that at home, this is where they start to really lay the lump. A one-game lead over the Miami Dolphins coming in. Just three losses. They were 6-3. and three. But one of those losses was 37-14 to 14 to the Indianapolis Colts earlier this year. They would meet the Colts today. The Colts had lost three of their last four, and the Bills had won three of their last four. And you knew this is how the game would go for Indianapolis on the opening kickoff. Scott Norwood kicks it to near side. James Pruitt fields it. And Mickey Sutton will come up with a fumble recovery as the ball just popped loose. And the Bills were in range to start things for Jim Kelly. Kelly looks over the middle. This pass deflected, and this is how it would go for the Bills. Thurman Thomas is right there to catch it. Five plays into the game. Bills are up 7-0. And Ron Meyer had to look to Eric Dickerson top. Well, looking to Dickerson, but maybe the first time he looked to him, maybe he shouldn't have tried a trick snap from center. Dickerson looking up field, loses sight of the football, gets tackled, it's hit. Leonard Smith recovers. His problems did not stop there. On his very next carry, he's coming up the football field looking for the cutback lane. Ball gets booted away from him. Cornelius Bennett with the recovery. Cornelius always around the football and showing that gratitude to Eric on the sideline. Thank you very much, Eric, he says. And then those two fumbles would lead to Scott Norwood's field goals of 42 and 40 yards. 13 to nothing was the score after the first quarter. Jim Kelly and Andre Reed then start to get things going. Kelly hits Reed and watch the move Reed puts on good. 32 yards for the touchdown, and Buffalo now on top, 20 to zip. Then just before the half ends, Kelly hooks up with Ray from three yards out. This ball is tipped again, 27 to nothing. Bills with the lead at halftime, and Buffalo making the plays defensively as well. This is what makes Cornelius Bennett the player he is. He plays off two blockers, gets caught inside a little bit, has the speed to get back outside and bring down Eric Dickerson. And quarterback Tom Ramsey comes in, doesn't get much help. Goes for Andre Rice and down the sideline. A perfect pass, and it's dropped. Ron Meyer's offensive unit, hapless, 64 yards rushing and minus seven passing. Now, the second half, not much better. Colts get their only score. Eric Dickerson fumbles the ball. Randy Dixon there was there to cover it, recover it for Eric Dickerson, so he got away with it, but 30 to 7 was the score, and Eric Dickerson walking off saying, boy, Pete Axelm is going to give me a hard time. Colts, three turnovers, <laughs> kick off in their first two possessions. Bills had the ball. In the AFC, it's the Buffalo Bills, but as good as they've been the last couple of years, real problems on the road, including the playoff game at Cincinnati last year. Two, only won two of their last eight road games. That's tough. And you think about going into Cincinnati, having to play on the road. If they hadn't been so poorly on the road before that, they likely would have played that game at home. Just the same, they'd won four of their last five games. They really needed to because the Miami Dolphins, yes, the Dolphins, were staying just one game behind them, going into Foxborough today. And they had this man, Cornelius Bennett, leaving the first half with a strained left knee. The problems... Normally reliable Scott Norwood misses a 24-yard chip shot. Bills nursing a 10-6 lead. Doug Flutie on the sidelines, praying for something to happen in the second half for New England. There's Flutie, and it worked because they give it to the rookie. And Patrick Egu go all the way. Patrick Egu from Nigeria, his first touchdown in the NFL. A veritable diamond mind for the NFL. Nigeria, that's where they find all the nightmares. Things begin to get worse for Buffalo. Brett Williams knocks it loose from Kelly, and he also gets the recovery. Marv Levy sees another drive wasted. Could have been one of those days. New England returns the favor. Steve Grogan to Hartley Dykes, and Dykes just dribbles it off the knee, the big fumble. Mark Kelso finally comes up with the ball. 
Hartley Dykes goes to the sidelines knowing that that one got away. As Larry Kinnebrew converts for Buffalo at the start of the fourth quarter. Touchdown, 17-13 Bills. Hartley looking for redemption in the Bills strike again, Tom. Thurman Thomas, who you'll see lined up all over the place. Here is a wide out. Blows by Maurice Hurst, has the great hands, gets into the end zone, his second TD of the day. 24-13, New England then goes 68 yards in three plays. Grogan to Hartley Dykes, as he gets his redemption for the touchdown, 24-20. Patriots gaining the momentum. Draw play to John Stevens, makes a nice cut, goes to the outside. John Stevens knows the way to the end zone. 126 yards, New England down by four. Grogan to Cedric Jones for the touchdown. Hold everything, though. Take a look at this as they bring it back for holding. And the Patriots have to settle for Jason Starosky's third field goal of the day. This one from 34 yards. Buffalo still leads at 24-23. So you figure the Bills are going to work the clock. No, they pass and they pay. Kelly's picked off by Maurice Hurst. Takes it in for the touchdown, 30-24 New England. The flag, though, was going the other way. Marv Lee discovers it's holding Buffalo. Patriots win it, 33-24. 20 points in the last eight minutes for the Patriots. The Bills, their second loss in the last three games. Patriots end a two-game losing streak. In Dallas, Miami with a chance to pull even with Buffalo. Two tall Jones streak of 201 games comes to an end. Last year, the AFC title game pitted the Cincinnati Bengals at home against the Buffalo Bills. This time, the two teams met in Buffalo, and the teams are struggling a little bit. The Bills at 7-4 and four did go into today's game at least tied for first in the AFC East. But at 6-5, and five, Cincinnati, the Super Bowl team from the conference, was fighting for their playoff lives. Boomer Esiason had his problems right off the bat. Bills defense gave one away last week at New England. Had the feeling all week this would be their day. Shane Conlon with the interception on Cincinnati's first possession. A big bill, and I do mean big, is ex-Cincinnati Bengal Larry Kinnebrew, who just bombed his way through the Bengal defense for 12 yards. A key play, setting up a field goal. Da, 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 Norwegian Woods. <laughs> Scotty Norwood, 24 yards. The Bills lead it three to nothing. A lot of battles between the battles involving some Pro Bowlers. Well, here you see Scott Radisic starting in place of an injured Cornelius Bennett. Gets good penetration through the line and brings down James Brooks. He had a solid game all day. And then Anthony Munoz here takes on Bruce Smith, sort of. Smith showing his great power getting rid of him, but Brooks showing some power running through an arm tackle by Smith. The guy who's going to be a Pro Bowler this year, Thurman Thomas. Pick up of 15 yards, 20 carries, 105 yards today. The sixth bill to go over 1,000 yards rushing. And also Thurman, who leads football in all-purpose yardage, makes a nice play on a 20-yard pickup on a Jim Kelly pass. After that play, Kelly to another pro bowler to be. It was last year. Andre Reid, touchdown. The Bills lead it 10 to nothing. Sam Weish at the end of the half. Look what happened to him. Bengals driving 19 seconds to go. Watch Bruce Smith. Simply leap over Max Montoya. Tries to get a size and has a hold of the face mask. So there's the flag. By the time the play is over, well, Nate Odoms picks it off. And then he's trying to rub it, bump it, stumble all the way upfield to get the Bills a score at the end of the half. Now the clock is wound down. But the half cannot end on a defensive penalty. Red Cashin says the face mask, and, and here's the play. You know, sometimes you're going to get the penalties for the mask. I think this was totally unintentional. The impressive thing, Bruce Smith going up about five feet in the air over the tackle. And so the Bengals get out of the play. Jim Breach with a field goal. It's good. And offsides with Buffalo, so the Bengals will decline. It'll be 10 to 3 at the half. But surprise, when Weiss went to the locker room, Marv and company protested the call. It was reviewed. And Tommy? Movement by the decent defensive player, but no contact. That's and, the key. And so the chain. We have on the last play a false start for the offense. The field goal is so good. And with an offensive penalty, they don't get another play, and they take three points off the board. They have no choice. So when Sam came out for the second half, he said, what? We thought it was 10 to 3. Now it's 10 nothing. James Brooks fumbled once in the first half, fumbles here in the second half, and Mark Kelts over the recovery at the 35-yard line of the Bills. Brooks with 105 yards on the day, but the two cough up. And just two plays later, Jim Kelly, who is receiving back, Ronnie Harmon. This is a pretty fast. Harmon Knight through the secondary 42 yards, and he could go all the way for the touchdown. The fans are ecstatic. And look at Marv. It's the greatest day ever. The Bills 17-0 over their nemesis Bengals. The Bengals on a Stanford Jennings touchdown, cut it to 17-7, but then Ted Marchabrodo opens up the playbook. Andre Reed 
in the open field, makes the move. Andre Reed so good this year in the open field, or after he makes the reception, in this case, carrying the ball, picked up 23 yards. Jim Kelly couldn't find anybody, so Kelly is going to run the ball. He may not be nimble, he may not be quick, but he got the ball down to the eight-yard line. The Bills get the call from the sidelines. Will it be Thurman Thomas? Will it be Andre Reed? Will it be Larry Kinner, Bruno Kelly? To Butch Roll. Three touchdowns. Shake. Rattle. Roll. Kelly with three touchdown passes on the day. And a little note on Butch Roll. Nine career receptions, five of them for touchdowns. The Bills over the Bengals, 24-7. to seven. Meanwhile, while the Bills... Playing in the Rose Bowl. Let me get around to the wager. Second and ten from the 39-yard line, and the catch is made. And that Reed slipping tackles, getting inside the 30, the 20, the 10, and Andre Reed scores the touchdown, breaking tackles along the way. And four game losing streak by upsetting the Buffalo Bills. The final score, 17 to 16. Left the game with a concussion. We'll keep you updated on those games. Of course, tonight, a game that all of a sudden takes on primary yard touchdown. PAT is missed, but the Saints lead it 6 to nothing. Next possession, a beleaguered Jim Kelly. Yeah, by Ricky Jackson. James Gathers. Gathers in the fumble. Jim Morris says, we haven't packed it in. We would like to hurt the Bills' playoff chances. And they do, and Forcade swings it to Dalton Hilliard. And look at him freeze Leonard Smith as he goes by. He's got a very low center of gravity, so any kind of weather, he's able to make the cut. 13-0 Saints, John Forcade, a 300-yard day. Mora just felt it in his gut. It was Forcade rather than Bear. Marv Levy, whose team lost in Seattle on Monday night, says, wait a minute, it's cold, we should love it here. James Lofton, many years in the cold as a Packer, gathers in the bomb from Kelly, 42 yards. The Bills have closed to 13-6. Scott Norwegian Wood, forget it. He was looking for his 119th straight consecutive PAT, forget it. No good, it's 13-6. Now Norwood, though, is at a field goal, 13-9. Kelly to Thurman Thomas, who, unusual for him, just drops the ball. And you figure Thermal Thomas might have worn the undershirt today, but he said, I don't care if it's cold. I can play in it. A rare drop for Thurman, not Thermal Thomas. But the second half kickoff, the Saints have a problem. Gene Atkins misplaced it. Mickey Sutton. Recovers it at the two, and the tide is changing when play action. Kelly to Pete Metzelars. Touchdown, Buffalo leads 19-16. Second half, as you might expect, in the cold of Western New York. Turnovers played a big part. Nate Odom's fifth interception of the year. Then, with the game tied at 19, the Bills on the move. But it goes off the hands of Thurman Thomas and Detroit Cook. A, a pass that I'm sure Kelly wishes he had back, even though it was tipped. It was an ill-advised pass that close to the goal line. And so Morton Anderson with a duck hook, but it makes it from 22 yards out. And the Bills couldn't muster a final drive. And the Saints really put a hurt on the Buffalo Bills, beating them 22 to 19. Only the second team to win in Buffalo, other than the Bills, in the last two seasons. The Broncos did it. Here on ESPN, but live at Candlestick Park early this afternoon, the San Francisco 49ers, owners of the best record in the National Football League, took on the Buffalo Bills, a team that had lost two in a row and a team that was badly in need of self-esteem. Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas did some finger-pointing early in the week. They kissed and made up publicly on Thursday. Cornelius Bennett not playing again, neither is Joe Montana. That's your cast of characters. When you take Montana out, who is the best, you don't fall very much to Steve Young. He throws it long, but on this play, the Bills defense is there with Kelso, Mark Kelso, making the catch in the end zone. Late in the first half, Bills defense stops Young on a fourth and goal, and Cornelius can't play, but he's psyched with his mates. They lead it 3-0 at the half, but to start the second half, more defense. Kelso with another interception. George Seifert says, whoa, we don't want to lose our momentum. Jim Kelly lost his, though. Bad pass picked off by Bill Romanowski. Takes it down to the 23-yard line, and the Niners are in business. San Francisco went right to work. Roger Craig at 105 yards, goes over the 1,000-yard mark this season, and he's having a bad year. Battle set up from the two. Craig behind Tom Rathman, 7-3, San Francisco. Ensuing kickoff, Ronnie Harmon cut to the outside. Looks like he has a nice return going, but he coughs up the football. 
Antonio Goss recovers for the Niners. And the Niners offense goes right back to work. Craig sweeping left. Niners want to get this running game going. Last couple of weeks, it's a 14-yard pickup for first down. Roger over the Zeno for the afternoon. That sets up Steve Young, who we know can move. And Steve Young shows the dimension that Joe Montana really doesn't have right now, an ability to get out of the pocket. He spots the end zone, curls up over the football for a touchdown. And on Buffalo's next possession, Kelly's pass is tipped by Andre Reid, who had to go up a little bit to get it into the arms of Ronnie Lott. Ronnie here spotting the territory, trying to make a touchdown, trying to get it, trying to get it down the football field as he becomes the 49ers all-time interception leader with 48. Breaking the mark by Jimmy Johnson. And so, Kelly at 265 passing yards, but three costly interceptions. And it took one play. Young, Jerry Rice, for the interception to backfire. 21-3, 49ers. Bills have made it 21-10. And when they complete a pass, this time Reed fumbles it. Michael Walter recovers. Marv Levy stunned. As for the third straight week, the Bills have lost at 21-10. And for Buffalo, now they have no shot of hosting a home playoff game, at least if they're going to win their division. They cannot host one because they would have a worse record than the Central champ. We know they have a worse record uh, than the AFC West champ, the Broncos. Now, two things. Inside the one, a minute, 11 seconds left in the half. Kennebrew in for a touchdown, and oh, there was a 10 nothing lead. Again, short to Lofton. He breaks the tackle, and Bills have a touchdown. James. For everybody. Full blitz again for Kelly, and he throws it up on top to Ronnie Harmon for a touchdown. So every time the Jets have unloaded the defensive bank and come with their defensive bank, to see the most gratifying thing for a team and a coach is to be visiting somewhere and winning the game uh, so impressively that people begin to leave the stands and drive home. We love those empty stands. Thurman Thomas has another score for Buffalo, and that makes it 29 to nothing. And with just Indianapolis, the next three games it was Reich, and he led them to three straight wins over the Rams, the Jets, and Miami. Breaking the tackles is Kenneth Davis for a touchdown. Well, it was bound to end up this way. It rarely, rarely goes the other way when the coach is finishing up his, his tenure with a team and, and, and in a sense is out. Everything just can tend to collapse. Not much you can do about it. Oh, it's torture. That's got to be torture for that man, Walton. Nothing. Buffalo, congratulations. The AFC Eastern champions. Stay tuned. On the shores of Lake Erie, two cold-weather ball clubs who stumbled till the end of the season, then found themselves to win their respective divisions in the AFC. The Cleveland Browns at 9-6-1, the Buffalo Bills at 9-7. You figured cold weather clubs playing in the cold weather a 1917 game no not even close beautiful january weather at cleveland stadium the dog pound a little quiet early mark tressman had some things up his sleeve as offensive coordinator so did his counterpart of the bills petty marchaprona nothing marchaprona could do the plays work jim kelly to thurman thomas drop drop again on the first series so next time kelly says let me go to a guy I know can hold on to the ball. Pro Bowl wide receiver Andre Reid. Let get him go. Forget the orange shoes on midfield. 72 yards. The Bills scored first. He let it seven to nothing. But the Browns, well, they weren't stopped very often by the Buffalo defense. Bernie Kosar to Ozzie Newsom, throwing under the gut often. Ozzie caught four passes. There were two of them this time to another tight end, Ron Middleton. When the drive stalls, occasionally Art still made a move and stopped Kevin Mack. But Cleveland's first drive, a 45-yard field goal attempt from Matt Barr, slips on the sand that Bruce Smith's called the Sahara Desert painted green with wind chill. It's a no-good field goal for 45 yards. But the Browns get going on the next drive. Kosar, Webster Slaughter. My goodness, those two hooked up for something shorter than 50 yards. Then Kosar to the Wizard of Oz. Was he playing his final game? 
We will see. On comes Matt Barr on the second drive. Another 45-yard field goal attempt. It's good. And the Bills' lead is cut to 7-3. to three. Every time Cleveland had the ball, they moved. Second quarter, Kosar to Foghorn Langhorn for 16 yards. And then on third and 15, they blitz the safety, blitz opposite the opposite corner. Webster Slaughter wide open, 52 yards. Art Modell psyched. The Browns lead at 10-7. Third and 15, Chris, you have to be thinking deep. Slaughter runs a little stop and go on Nate Odoms. Once he stops, touchdown. Great touch by Kosar. Jim Kelly, cool as a cucumber. First time he threw to James Lofton, the venerable Lofton dropped the pass. This time Lofton hangs on with a 22-yard hookup. Again, Kelly pumps, rolls, has all day, finds Lofton, makes the move at the three, touchdown, 33 yards, 14-10, Buffalo. But late in the first half, Cleveland had the ball. That meant they were on the move. Kevin Mack playing a big role, had 15 yards, 62 on the day. Back to the air, Kosar to Ozzy, catch is good. And on first and goal, Ron Middleton, back up tight end. Got a big touchdown against Minnesota, catches a big one here, and boom! 17-14 Cleveland, under two minutes to go in the first half. Kelly to Don Beebe, scary moment. As he's upended by Felix Wright, Beebe, fortunately, after some scary moments, was okay. On the play, though, a weird call. Thought the rest made the one call that it couldn't have been. They called it incomplete. It should have either been a catch, dead when he hit the ground, or an interception after he fumbled. Well, they called neither. They just called it uh, the incompletion. Second half started for the Bills. And Cleveland leading 17-14. This one, Kelly, after being on the mark, all first half, underthrew Mark Harper, intercepted. And that's set up. Bernie Kosar was 20 of 29 for 251 to wide open Webster Slaughter. Another touchdown on third and long. This one was on third and eight, 24 to 14. Why was he wide open? Tom? Untimely double up. The defenders were designed to take the outside guy and the inside guy. They both fit on the inside guy, results in an easy touchdown for Cleveland. But Buffalo thought they could come back and tell him, so after a mistake-free first half, interception and a fumble this time by Kinnebrew, and the Browns in business. But then they cough it up. Kevin Mack with a fumble. Kosar misses it, trying to protect his elbow or something. Mark Kelso falls on the ball for the Bills. And then on third and goal, following the fumble, Kelly Thurman Thomas holds on seven yards. Bills within three, 24-21. Now on the ensuing kickoff from Scott Norwood, keep in mind, the last two years, the Bills have had the best mark of opposing return yardage on kickoff. The lowest average, uh, except here, forget it, gone. Eric Metcalf, the only guy that grazed him was Norwood. Let's get him go. First postseason kickoff return ever for the Cleveland Browns. First they've had in three years in any game. Metcalf goes 90 yards, hits 31-21. Way to go, Art, right? But in the fourth quarter, Art would sit down because Kelly and Thomas, 28-yard hookup, which brings in Scott Norwood. When the drive stalls, now he kind of just punches this one, but the 30-yarder is good, and the Bills trail by a touch, 31-24. Clock on the Browns' side, but plenty of time. Matt Barr, 46-yarder in the sand. And it's good, and the Browns are back up by 10, 34 to 24. The Bills are finished, right? No, sir. Kelly to Thurman Thomas. 15 yards as he beats Clay Matthews. Then to Ronnie Harmon, they're backing up. Well, it's a good job by the backs after they caught the ball by getting outside because the linebackers are designed, by design, want to keep those runners inside. And on the three, Kelly to Thurman Thomas, who caught 13 for 150. Only rushed for 27 yards, 34 to 30, but on the extra point, watch Norwood slip. And instead of down by three, they're down by four. 34 to 30 after the block. The Bills try an onside kick. It went out of bounds, and they end up kicking the ball deep. The Browns finally punted, and the Bills get it back. Under two minutes to go, Kelly to Harmon. Nine yards. On fourth and ten, Bills spend their final timeout. And it's worth it. The hookup from Kelly to Beebe. 13 yards and a first down. Kelly to Thomas. Doesn't pick up the first, but stops the clock. Then on fourth and one, Kelly to Reed. Seven yards. Drive alive. Kelly to Thomas with 26 seconds to go, 11 yards on second and goal. How many times are you going to get a guy open by a step and a half? You figure only once in the red zone. This was it to Ronnie Harmon. One, two, but no ball. Incomplete. Incomplete. So on third and goal, you figure he's got to force it. He does. 
Clay Matthews steps in front of Thurman Thomas, saving the day for the Browns and owner Art Mordell, ruining the day for Marv Levy. Clay Matthews, the hero, with the interception on the one as the Browns hold back the Buffalo Bills 34 to 30 in what was supposed to be a low scoring game. And afterward, the head dog said,